Chapter Eight of the Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter Eight, the Son, the Everlasting Creator. Hebrews chapter one verses ten to twelve, and thou Lord in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou continuest. And they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a mantle shalt thou roll them up, as a garment they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Come and hearken once more to what the divine message has to tell us of the glory of the Son in whom the Father speaks to us. Come and see how truly he is one with God and shares with him all his glory. The deeper our insight into the true Godhead of our Lord Jesus Christ, His perfect oneness with God, the more confident shall we be that He will, in a divine power, make us partakers of His work, His life, His indwelling. We find Christ here set before us as the Creator, to whom all owes its existence, as the everlasting and unchangeable One, to whom alone, when all waxeth old and perisheth, can be said. Thou continuest; thou art the same; thy years shall not fail. In Isaiah, God speaks of Himself. Hast thou not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. In our text, we see the Son as the Almighty Creator, the everlastingly unchangeable One, that we may know who it is through whom God speaks to us and to whom He has entrusted the work of our salvation. The words are taken from Psalm 102. The ordinary reader would not think that the Messiah or the Son was here spoken of, but taught by the Holy Spirit, our writer sees how all redemption is wrought only through the Son, and how, therefore, the building up of Zion and the appearing in His glory, verse 16, the looking down from the sanctuary and the loosing those who are appointed unto death, verse 20, all points to the Son as Redeemer. And then what follows is true of him too. It is, thou hast laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. God is the Almighty and everlasting. These are the attributes of Him to whom our salvation is entrusted. Listen, believer, Christ thy Redeemer is the Almighty One. God saw that none but His Son could meet thy need. Hast thou so seen it too that this, His Almighty Power, has been claimed and appropriated for thy daily life? Hast thou learnt never to think of Him otherwise than as one who calleth the things that are not as though they were, and creates what otherwise could not be? Christ, thy Redeemer, is the everlasting and unchangeable One. Hast thou heard Him speak? I, Jehovah, change not; therefore ye are not consumed. And learnt to trust him as the one who is each moment to thee all that he can be, and who will, without variation or shadow of turning, maintain in never ceasing power his life within thee. O、oh, learn that God saw it needful to speak to thee through none other than such a one as could reach the heart and fill it with the power of His eternal Word. The Almighty Son, through whom God hath created all things, who upholdeth and filleth all things by the word of His power, this is He who will even so, in the power of His Godhead, uphold and fill thy whole life and being. Thy Creator is thy Redeemer. One great cause of feebleness and backsliding in the Christian life is the power of circumstances. We often say that temptations that come to us from our position in life, from the struggle to live. From the conduct of our fellow men, draw us away from God, and are the cause of our falling into sin. If we but believe that our Redeemer is our Creator, He knows us; He appoints and orders our lot. Nothing that comes to us but what He has in His hands. He has the power to make our circumstances, however difficult, a heavenly discipline, a gain, and a blessing. He has taken them all up into the life plan He has for us as Redeemer. Did we but believe this, how we should gladly meet every event with the worship of an adoring faith? My Creator, who orders all, is my Redeemer, who blesses all. 
and now let me once again urge my reader to mark well the lesson this chapter is teaching us and the object it has in view let no one think as i myself long thought that because we firmly believe in the divinity of our saviour this chapter with its proof texts has no special message for our spiritual life and that we may therefore hasten on to what the epistle has to teach farther on no let us remember that this is the foundation chapter the divinity of christ is the rock on which we rest it is in the virtue of his divinity that he effected a real cleansing and putting away of sin that he can actually communicate and maintain the divine life in us that he can enter into our inmost being and dwell there if we open our hearts and give them time to receive the full impression of the truth we shall see that all that we are to learn of the person and work of christ has its value and its power from this that he is god our creator from whom we have our life it is he who alone can enter into us to give the new life it is he blessed be his name who will do it now as god he is the hidden ground of all existence and has the power to enter all and fill it with himself every part of his work has the character and the power of a divine work if we would but believe that christ the son is god is jehovah the eternal the creator how he would make our inner life the proof of his almighty power paul said i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord let us do so too in the christian life the chief thing the one thing needful is the knowledge of christ not the intellectual apprehension of the truth but the living experimental heart knowledge that comes from faith and fellowship with him from love and obedience may it be ours god is the incomprehensible one in all thy thoughts of him in all thy efforts to know him as revealed in christ remember the true knowledge of god is something above sense and reason as the light reveals itself to the open eye that has been created for it god reveals himself to the longing heart all the teaching of angels and prophets of the words and the truths of the bible can but point the way let god in christ speak in thy heart then shalt thou know him bow in adoring awe and worship christ let all his saints worship him it is worship not study will prepare us to know christ they shall perish they shall all wax old this is what the creature is even though created by god with every experience even though coming from god thou continuest thou art the same this is our security and our joy christ my redeemer is the unchangeable every moment the same my keeper and my life end of chapter eight